Hello, and welcome to this edition of Create a Life You Love. I believe that each and every one of us has a dharma, a purpose, something that drives us from deep within to create a life that we truly love. When you know your calling, your passion, and your purpose, and you follow it, it leads you to a very exquisite place in life where you are able to make your passion your work and your work your purpose. Today's guest is going to talk a little bit about that with us. His name is Todd DeQuisto of DeQuisto Photography. Hi, Todd. Thanks for Hello, being here. Hello, Tony. Thank you for having me. Absolutely my pleasure, and what a great honor. For me, yes. <laughs> Thanks. So, Todd, I have so many questions that were emailed in to me for you today that all of the viewers want to have answers to. I hope you're ready. We'll, we'll see, I guess, right? So you're a photographer. When did you first know photography was what you wanted to pursue? Well, <clears throat> I would have to say that uh, I was given a Polaroid land camera when I was in my early teens mm -hmm. from my parents. and. Um, Proceeded to go outside and um, came back in about five minutes later and had shot the entire pack of film of 10 exposures. And it was one of those cameras where you peeled off the Polaroid and saw the image right away or within a minute and a half. And uh, I think they thought, you know, it took you 10 minutes to go through nine hours worth of film. Right. I think they were a little upset that they'd perhaps made a big financial mistake by giving me a camera. But um, I continued that, and they continued supporting that uh, habit of mine, and I went through lots of film, and I would put all the Polaroids in a photo album, and, <clears throat> and um, I would, you know, people would come over, and this little teenager would show, you know, show everybody their photos in the photo album, and, and everybody that looked at it would look, go through the pages and stop on the exact same photograph and say something about it, and I took note of that and I thought, well, this is pretty cool. You know, everybody's reacting to a similar image that there must be something there. And so yeah. I thought that that was really a good feeling. It, it made me feel really good. You know, it was great for my self-esteem as a teenager. And um, <clears throat> so I thought, yeah, this is kind of cool. I proceeded with that and just quickly kind of understood that uh, you know, I had a, just a little bit different perspective on life and different way of seeing things and that people respond to that, so it kind of fueled that passion. Excellent. Now, did you know then, did you, did you think, this is what I'm going to do for my adult life? <clears throat> no, I had no plan to do it professionally at all. I, um, I went to school f for business and thought that uh, business degree would you know, lead me in a direction that would be fulfilling and enjoyable. And I tried that um, after college and just really got quickly bored. I knew I was not destined to work either at a computer or at a desk for that matter. Okay. So then how did you make the transition into uh, photography? How did you start that up? Uh, I <clears throat> was working in marketing and then got an offer to uh, join somebody that was starting a film company. And uh, he and I had gotten to know each other throughout the years because I was interested in it as a more of a hobby and more of a something to do uh, after work and weekends. Mm -hmm. And he gave me an offer that I, you know, just couldn't pass up the opportunity to work with him on the ground level of a company that um, I thought would go somewhere o over time and just learn the craft of filmmaking initially, which is you know somewhat close to uh, still photography, mm -hmm. at least close enough that it's uh, seemed to make a lot of sense. Awesome. So now, how long, including that time, how long have you been a professional photographer then? <clears throat> well, yeah, I would say until, uh, you know, it took uh, three or four I, I started getting paid as a photographer when I was 24. Although nice. I look at that work and I, I feel it's far from professional. It, you know, so uh, since my 20s. So I, I just want to say, that of course, everything is an evolutionary process. 
right? Right, absolutely. And so our beginning work, even in whether you're a marketer or a secretary, our beginning work is never going to be good, as good as the work you're doing today. And, and in 10 years, you'll look back at this work and see maybe where it could have been. All right. I think everybody feels that way. Would you agree? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. You know, looking at something out of context is certainly not a fair judge of how good or bad or it was or you right. know, it's it's really hard to look back and say it was either good or not so good. Well, yeah, exactly. And you were paid for it, so it must have I been was paid good. For it, so. it must have been good. In they the end, they must have enjoyed exactly. the product. So exactly. that's a good thing. So what type of photography did you start with? I started primarily with uh, people. I, uh, I enjoy connecting with somebody on a uh, personal level, even with if I only have five minutes with a person, I'd like to try to find something about that person right away and then go about uh, challenging myself to capture that, whether it's a personality trait or uh, uh, some physicality that they have that I think is interesting. Um, so I, I always found that to be most enjoyable from my early days and even through today. Nice, perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, so you started with people. What did you move into <clears throat> after you were? Did did you stay with the people aspect? Did you move into a different area? It was uh, always connected with people, and okay. uh, as even though I had a studio for over twenty years, I prefer to work out of my studio and go on location. So uh, there was nothing better for me than a challenge of going into a location that you may have never been to and try to find the really the, the magic or the sweet spot of a location and then use that as a back background or uh, incorporate that into the shot of the person and there's nothing that I find more enjoyable than to um, uh, photograph somebody in a location and have the person that works next to that person say wow where was this shot and I would say well it's right over there Nice. And that, that person had never seen that in that way or never really had noticed that area or something, you know. So you're making something out of nothing, essentially. Okay, that's awesome. That's very cool. So in the beginning of your career, I understand you had quite a few uh, breaks or some good, some good experiences landed in your lap. Do you want to share any of those with us? Yeah, I think... Um, uh, first break that came early in my career, I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to um, show some work to an or organization out of Washington, D.C., who was looking to hire a photographer to go to China to capture some of the culture and the people there. And I think they're more interested in the people and how the people interact with the environment than the static or the, you know, the historical sites and the, you know, the snapshot opportunities. So I submitted my portfolio and somehow got picked um, to, uh, to uh, go on assignment there. And the organization's name was the US uh, CPFA, which is the United States China People's Friendship Association. Wow. And they sent me over there uh, for a month. And essentially, I hooked up with a, a group tour for a few days. But the remainder of the time, they gave me a driver and, a, and an interpreter. And I could pretty much go where I wanted to go. How exciting was that? That was fantastic. And I think we have some shots that I brought along of some of that early work. Okay. Um, Do you, should we wait to look at the shots? Do you want to go through some um, of them? Now? I think okay. he's rolling Let's them right now. Let's go through some of those shots. Yeah. So um, I was uh, given access to places that um, a lot of people were not given access to. This was the first tour coordinator that was allowed to bring people into China, in, in, mm -hmm. I think, in the uh, early 80s or very late 70s. So the access I got to pretty much anything was, was pretty incredible. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I was, um, uh, usually didn't hook up with my driver till about noon, so I had the mornings free, so I'd wander with my camera in the morning, and the game of the morning became to try to lose the Chinese authorities that were following me. <laughs> so that became a cat and mouse game every morning, and it was just as fun as shooting the people of China. How amazing, so how was, amazing. But this work all of a sudden uh, broadened my horizons as far as who I could now contact to do other work for. You know, I no longer was just a, 
a local photographer. I was one that already had work published internationally, so that that kind of catapulted my career and made it a lot easier for me to, um, or at least more confident in going to show my work outside the outside the state. Absolutely. Now I know you do some corporate photography also. Do you want to talk a little bit about that at all? Uh, sure. Uh, I primarily, uh, like I said, do people on location and um, a lot of that is uh, corporate work. But corporate work mm -hmm. is uh, different in the sense that um, it's just not a CEO in, in the boardroom or whatever. I try to really uh, get that CEO, if it is a, a shot of a CEO, interacting with the people on the floor, get him, pull him a little or her out of their comfort zone and get them into a situation that they don't all of a sudden feel all totally in control of. So they're a little vulnerable. And in that vulnerability, I find that their personality, once you get their comfort level a little bit uh, under control, uh, personality comes through. And it's much easier to get a real shot of who that person is versus um, who, that, who they think they should be in a setting in a boardroom or their office. Nice. So Very cool. That's very exciting. So you've also done a little teaching. I was approached by a few places to teach photography because I, I, something I always wanted to do in it. And um, I always said I really can't because I travel so much. Most of my work is um, out of state and I'm on the road quite a bit. And because of that, how could I ever hold down a, uh, a weekly or daily teaching job? But I finally said yes to the Art Institute of Wisconsin, and I said, oh, only if you understand that I will miss uh, X amount of days of teaching. And if you're comfortable with that, I can find a substitute, another professional photographer in, in town to cover my time. But um, uh, if you're comfortable with that, I would love to do it. So right. I ended up, uh, I think I taught for about two and a half years. Nice. Mm -hmm. that I really had enjoyed to be, it. Yeah, that had to be such a great experience. When you were teaching, were there things that you also learned at the same time? It's very different when you have to verbalize things. Uh, all of a sudden you have to rethink things, things that you uh, go through the motions automatically without thinking about perhaps uh, your lighting schematic or whatever it might be, that all of a sudden it's, um, all of a sudden you have to verbalize it and you have to really take a step back. and think it through because um, my first language is not English, I feel it's, it's in the visual realm. So for me to put things together orally, it, it takes um, uh, a lot of thought and effort. I, I get that. I can, I'm one person who is right there with you. That uh, makes sense to me. So you also have a book, the Milwaukee book, which you were kind enough to bring a copy of. We were kind enough to bring it up. Yes. It's an old book. It was uh, in 2000 I was approached by a publisher and uh -huh. if I uh, could uh, capture a collection of about 100 images of Milwaukee without any sort of direction. They just wanted um, uh, my vision of the city of Milwaukee. Awesome. So we, um, uh, they gave me a year time frame to wow. collect that, uh, those images of Milwaukee and I submitted them, and they made a book out of them. And how exciting! I'm not sure it's even available anymore. So it's. it's I'm sure if you uh, go to Amazon, you can find it. I'm pretty positive it's probably still out there. I wouldn't have a clue. I, I'm gonna guess that. If you Google it, if it's Googled, it'll be found. I'll Somebody has a copy. I'll trust you on that one. Yeah. So, um, other than the book, the Milwaukee book. You've had quite a few of your images published, or your photos, or your uh, in your career. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What the photos were, what they were for? Well, um, I think you can go through some of the photographs, but um, uh, I've developed a way to um, to shoot on location using a card system. So when I show up on location, I pull a card out of my van, and I am shooting within minutes versus um, for years, you know, working out of cases. And um, uh, so when I go on location, I am, uh, within minutes, I'm ready to shoot. I've done a lot of um, uh, work for um, different convention vi visitors bureau, bureaus throughout the country and 
Florida, and uh, one of my favorites is Ventura County, showing a lot of their tour, tourism guides or guidebooks every year. Um, we, uh, <clears throat> because of the water around Door County, we do a lot of uh, boating activities. Pretty much I'm giving a, given a, uh, an idea or layout and then tasked with um, making that happen and dealing with all of the uh, parameters that that shoot can bring up. So um, uh, I thought for a while that the magazine work is where I want, wanted to go and until and you realize that um, it's good for the career and getting your name out there, but it's not very good for the, um, the checkbook because they really don't, uh, the, they pay a fraction of what a corporate assignment would pay. You know, the trade-off is you don't get a credit line in your yeah. corporate work, whereas in editorial work you have the credit line. So. so would you say you do a lot more corporate work today than other types of work? Advertising, commercial, and corporate work. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a mixture. I do a very little editorial anymore, but um, uh, it's, it's a good mixture. Awesome. Very cool. Um, now, I understand you recently partnered up with iLevel Media. Am I saying that correctly? Mm -hmm. Correct. What, what has that brought to the table for you, and how has it expanded your career? Well, I started out in film production, so I throughout the years would uh, clients would ask me you know if I'm doing photography work for them they'd ask me could you do this film back then or video ultimately video and I said um, absolutely I would you know whether or not I uh, knew exactly what I was doing uh, I still took it on and uh, knew the basics of it to get through it but um, uh, the more I got into it the more I realized uh, it's just uh, story storytelling in a different Modality, you know, it's just uh, the motion. So, in some respects, it's easier to tell a story in motion because of the fact that you have time rather than mm -hmm. just one image or a handful of images. Um, so, in some respects, it's easier. In some respects, it's more difficult. But um, it seemed like a natural progression. And um, uh, so, I had been doing it on my own all along. When I saw an opportunity to join a uh, to become a partner in a uh, uh, video production company, I saw the opportunity to expand my client base as well as the uh, the budgets that we had to work with. We could do a lot more, have bigger crews, uh, much more uh, uh, ability to bring in graphics, special effects, animation. Mm -hmm. So really make it more of a big production. And that was that seemed kind of fun to me. Uh, that's incredible. So, have you been doing a lot more than of the video? Is it, it videography? Yes. Then, yeah. Still, photography as a career is really um, the the pie has uh, been shrinking ever since the digital introduction, and um, the number of photographers has been growing every year. So, it's kind of an odd supply and demand uh, economic thing going on. Uh, the um, amount of um, money that's spent in photography is just plummeted because pretty much everybody can be a photographer. Not everybody can tell a story in a photo, but um, everybody can get reasonable images with um, very little uh, investment in camera uh, and knowledge and experience. So um, uh, video has started consuming more and more of my time to a point where now it's probably 60 to 70 percent video, 30 percent if I'm lucky, 40% still photography. You know, I and I will say there have been so many changes since the first time you took a picture to today, the technological advances of photography have been astronomical. I mean, we would have never imagined some of the things that some of the phones can take. I mean, just incredible quality pictures, but not everybody has the eye and the alignment for it. Um, and yeah, even even video. Video has changed such a great deal. And if you look at social media, if you want somebody to pay attention to what you have on your social media, it instantly goes to those 30 to 90 second videos. Not saying that's what you do. I'm sure mm -hmm. yours is a lot more detailed and there's a lot more quality content to them, but everything is going the way of video now absolutely right. right 
So what have you noticed in the changes in technology and how has that, other than uh, supply and demand, how, what have you noticed as far as the advancements in technology and how that's um, affected the work that you do? Has it made it somewhat easier or? No, I think it's, uh, it really hasn't changed that much. I mean, in some ways you might think it's made it harder because you have to prove your worth, but I've kind of felt that from day one, every assignment you have to, you know, you're based on your, you're judged on your worst assignment or your last assignment. Right. So I felt the, uh, the really a strong need to prove myself on every assignment. But I think what the digital age has done to photography is it's taken a craft, a true craft, and um, made the craft not so much of uh, highly regarded or respected as it once was. And uh, uh, you know everybody's a photographer, and there's some really great photographers that have only used the phone and can do some great things with them. So Absol yeah, it's really um, not that it's cheapened the art of photography, but it certainly changed it from a craft to a uh, to whatever it is today. I'm not sure to something that's reachable by by everybody. Absolutely, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, I mean, when, even when I look at some pictures, again, on social media, I'm, I'm in awe of what has been captured in them. I mean, right. But I'm also the type of photographer that I was taking pictures and went to my niece and said, I don't understand why my pictures look so foggy. And she took her sleeve and wiped my phone lens and said, try it again. <laughs> they came out much better then. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Okay. I'm that person that needs a photographer or someone to clean my lens, apparently. You just need a teenager that knows, knows the medium much better than you. Oh, my you. gosh. It doesn't that blow you away how much they know about, the, about social media and, and technology? Oh, it's just, it's astounding. Okay. Um, let's, let's get back to you, though. <laughs> so what types of video are you producing now? Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the video we do is for the web usage, which um, makes it, um, you know, the stories have to be very condensed, they have to be short form, because uh, the attention span or the amount of time that people spend on a video on a website is very limited. And because of that, you have to tell the story very concisely and quickly. So um, uh, a lot of it's the web, on the web usage. And okay. Excellent. But what I excel in really is, and what I enjoy most, are uh, not so much selling a product, but uh, telling the story of the person that just happens to be associated with a product or a process. And, but it's more about the person, and that I, I think that. is much more rewarding, much more fun, and I think it, it engages a viewer much uh, on a much deeper level. I, I absolutely love that. Now, you owned uh, or are DeQuisto Photography? Yes, I, although most of my work is through I'm Level Media, I still, um, you know, I, I do um, uh, a lot of personal work and, and still maintain a website, and, but I really don't seek assignments uh, through my photography. I seek it through I Level. It's the same. Same process, just different flag I'm flying. Okay. Mm -hmm. And tell me, what's your favorite type of photography to do? If you could just do it all day long, what would it be? Well, I think I get some examples of uh, some just uh, work that's not part of assignments. Uh, <clears throat> that, um, you know, most of them are people-centered. And um, whether it's uh, uh, on assignment or not, uh, if, if I find... Uh, something I'm interested in, I will attack it full force with the camera. And, uh, you know, I, luckily I still have the drive and the passion for photography. So when I'm on vacation, I will sp spend a lot of my time behind the camera just because I still have that drive and that energy to, uh, to capture some compelling, alluring shots. Excellent. Now, the you today, if you could go back and talk to that teenager when he first got that camera, what would the best piece of advice be that you could give that teenager? Good question. I know. Are you sure that's on the list there? It is not. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is my question <clears throat> for you. <laughs> what piece of advice I'd probably say, um, uh, just con 
you know, continue to explore uh, mm -hmm. your ability to observe the world in a slightly different way. And I wish I had embraced it sooner and um, uh, made it more of a, a, a earlier full-time endeavor. And just, um, uh, how's that? that? That's kind of weak advice. So. Yeah, that would, be, that would be awesome advice. That would be awesome advice. Yeah, just to just embrace uh, the, the different perspective on life. Yeah, absolutely. So after 30 years of photography, what is it that keeps you passionate about photography? Oh, I still have the same sort of feelings when people look at my work and say, oh, that's really, that's a nice shot. That's really, you know, I really like that. And, and to me, it's, it's nothing extraordinary, but it really elicits um, some positive responses, and I still get a charge out of that, and that, that has not waned at all through the years. Let's tell everybody how they can reach you if they'd like to reach you. They can reach me either through my website at uh, thequistophotography.com or ilevel.net, eye eye either way. Okay. And I absolutely positively want to thank you for being my guest today. You've been an extraordinary guest, and I, it's been such an honor to have you here. And I want to say thank you for coming out of your comfort zone. And... <laughs> being on this side of the camera. Um, it's really, an, it was such an honor to Well, thank you. Thank you for having me, and um, it's good to get out of your comfort zone once in a while. Absolutely. I recommend everybody get out of their comfort zone. Mm, I agree. And I'd like to thank you for joining us today. I will be back again soon with the next edition of Create a Life You Love. Until then, each and every day, find one thing you're passionate about and do it. Watch how your life unfolds and changes in the direction you want it to be. Thanks and have an amazing rest of the day.